Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. I've never had to like talk to this many people before, so it's going to be a little bit getting used to, but this is going to be a fun podcast. I've been looking forward to uh, having all these cats in here. Hopefully next time we can have the full band. All eight of us. That's Yeah, the, the Appalachian <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan. But in the studio right now, I of course have Halo. Thank you and then me. sitting to my right, this, yeah, this is right, Brandon Hall, the guitarist of the band, and then sitting kind of to my south, <laughs> and my, my west, north, northwest, I guess, Sean Hunt, the drummer. How, you go, how, how y'all doing? Doing great, doing man. Great. Doing great. Doing great. Pleasure to be here. Hey, it's a pleasure to have y'all in here. So uh, Halo, the new album, is going to be dropping tomorrow. Yep. And this is going to be a self-titled album, am I right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so uh, why did you pick it's going to be April 9th? Why April 9th? Is that just, just did yeah. you want to get out as just, soon as you possibly just, could? Yeah, or something? I feel like it was a good time. I feel like I was ready to, you know, release something like that. I feel like it's going to be good. So, how do you go about picking the members of your band? I trust that these two guys are phenomenal musicians, but how, how, do you, how does that process usually go? Honestly, um, I'm at. Brandon through Kevin. So he brought him to band practice one day. He's amazing. He's good at what he does. And uh, I already knew Sean because we used, I used to play with uh, John Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how we knew each other and Kevin and everyone. So it's just uh, I went to school with my pianist, actually, um, Destiny. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I knew her. That's kind of how I knew Ian as well. You know, I didn't go to school with him, but I knew him because I was in a band with him before. So. I, I know that a lot of your songs, they were kind of, uh, they have a pop feel mm -hmm. to it. And uh, Brandon over here has an ACDC shirt on. And uh, Sean, I know you're a, a rocker at heart as well. Mm -hmm. is, is that kind of a struggle to bring these, uh, you know, kind of rock and roll musicians to uh, that style that you usually do? I don't think so. I think we do a pretty good job during practice, you know? Haley, Haley has a really uh, eclectic, like, I guess say body body of songs that she likes to do, mm -hmm. and that's that's actually why it got us interested in working with Haley. Um, she opened up for us at a New Year's Eve gig, um, New Year's Eve, twenty nineteen, going into mm -hmm. two thousand twenty, and um, we were sitting with her mom, her mom and dad, Kevin Cool and I were, and um, we were talking, you know, all the songs she was she was singing on backing tracks, and we were like, you know, we like every song she was doing. You know, yeah. It was all stuff, you know, it was, it was just, you know, we were just like, we'd really like to work with her. And fortunately, we were lucky enough to, she threw an offer our way to come jump in with her. And so we, you know, it's working out. Huh. Yeah, I, I do see a lot of uh, artists around the area kind of uh, dipping and dabbling in other styles, and especially working together, too. That's something that I think is so cool, uh, especially nowadays, is mm -hmm. how a lot of, uh, Musicians will just jump in other people's bands, like how you play in Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding Company, as it's, well. It's fun doing something totally different than what you're normally been doing, mm -hmm. just just a breath of fresh air, you know. Uh, and you know, it's musicians, uh, you know, especially in the local scene, and we, you know, we can't appreciate what you do with this show enough. Um, you know, it's networking. Yeah. You, you know, you're friends with this guy who knows a guitar player over here. Who, you know, who knows the guy that writes some good songs over here? Pretty soon, you've got yeah, this. You know, <laughs> so. yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it really is cool. And with uh, this new album that you're working on, Halo, how did you go about the process of the songs? Because to me, if I was a musician, that would be the hardest part. Is like what songs to include on the album and what get pushed back. Well. I have my opinions about the songs that I like, you know, and um, I want to make sure that I get those in there. Yeah. And, you know, the way I go by the order is, you know, I want them to be cohesive, make them understand, you know, all of it is one piece, if that makes sense. So, you, yeah, you're not trying to look at it as just an album with a few hit singles. Yeah. You're looking at it as a whole concept. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that almost every musician should have that uh, opinion whenever it comes to their Albums because that like, growing up that's that's what I dug about music especially bands like uh, Pink Floyd or the Sgt Pepper and the Lonely Hearts Band how it was 
an experience more than it was just listening to an album. It mm-hmm. told a story. Mm-hmm. It took you on an adventure almost, and that's really exciting when yeah. it comes to music. How long have you been uh, playing guitar for, Brandon? Uh, me, I've been playing for about 12 years or so now, give or take. Um, yeah, I fell in love with the instrument. Really, I've kind of always been excited about guitar, and uh, some of my earliest memories, uh, my dad and my grandpa went in and uh, bought a little junior acoustic guitar when I was like four or five years old, and I just had a fascination with the instrument at this age. Obviously, I'm not playing at that point. Yeah. Fast forward a few years, and you know, I, I find an electric guitar at a flea market that absolutely, you know, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I had to have that. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've always been fascinated with the instrument since I was really young. Um, but then by the time I turned about 15 or 16 going into high school, and uh, or at least partially through high school at that point, I became really enamored with you know, the rock bands, the Angus Youngs of ACDCs, the Ace Frehleys of Kiss, the, the Gary Rossingtons of Skinners. Those were some of the early influences that when I would watch, in particular, their live performances, uh, really just I fell in love with the instrument. And to this day, that's a love that's not really wavered in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think that uh, if people listen to that little voice in their head long enough, you find out what you're supposed to do in life. Like, you'll see somebody doing something, and you're like, that's what they were supposed to do. That they, they, they found it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people search for that for quite a while. How, how about you, Sean? When did you start playing drums? And are you mostly a drummer, or, do, or are you like a, I'm, like I'm, a uh, uh, Foo Fighter? Uh, da- David? No, uh, I, I, I strict, I'm just strictly a dr- uh, drummer percussionist. Um, I've been playing since I was 11 years old. Uh, if you don't mind, scoot into the mic a little sure, bit. Sure. Yeah, you're fine. Um, been playing since I was 11. That's well, that's going on 42 years now. You'd think I'd be better by now. <laughs> but, um, I've been, you know, I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to. Uh, I started playing gospel music in church when I was 11, mm-hmm. and it was a fluke happenstance when that even happened. Um, the regular drummer at our services was out. No one was there to play drums, and my dad pointed at me and said, you play. And miraculously, I can keep time. And I've been playing ever since. Wow. And, you know, and it's great because, you know, I, you know, like Kevin Cole and myself, we've been playing for umpteen years. And we're yeah. playing with, you know, Brandon, who's a little younger than we are, um, Haley, who's, you know, I'm old enough to be her dad. You know? <laughs> Uh, our keyboardist, he's younger than that, um, you know, and it's 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 really fun seeing these young kids have the love that I remember I had for it when I was that age. Yeah, you know, and it kind of make it kind of you know it does it kind of gets me going a little bit, you know, kind of makes me want to strive a little bit harder and do a uh-huh. good job for them, you know, because I feel like I'm the old man and I need <laughs> to kind of show these young kids, you know. How to do it. So, well, you're I mean, the mentor. I, yeah, I you're, guess you're, so. Yeah. I'm yeah. the dad role, yeah, <laughs> I guess. So. It, it's, it's cool, though, because me and you kind of had the uh, same start. I've started playing drums in church, too, and with the same circumstance as mm-hmm. well. Uh, the preacher at the time, his son played drums, and he was sick that day. That was so cool. he made me pick him up, and I, I fell in love with the drums. I'm not as good as you or a lot of other people out uh, here, but I still dabble when I can. That's almost the same story. It was the, it was the, it was the preacher's son. Who was ah. sick that day? And uh, yeah, it was that's good. that's weird, man. But that's it, weird. You know, I think a lot of times if that had never happened, would I have ever picked up a pair of sticks? And you know, it's like you know, I guess you say that crossroads. You yeah. Know, you know, and uh, I, was, I was lucky. I guess I was lucky the guy got sick that day. You know? <laughs> so. How how often do you get asked if you're a member of Pink Floyd? Oh, I get, I get, I get, I get the David Gilmore thing a lot, uh, especially if my hair grows out a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's you like, are yeah. a spitting image, man. I get Tyler Childers all the time. That's what I get. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. See that. especially his wife, uh, Sonora May. Him, his wife, and my wife are identical too. So that doesn't yeah. help anything yeah. at all. Well. You probably you could probably get by with some things. Maybe uh, Halloween. You're uh, David Gilmore, say. and I'm Tyler Childers. Yeah, you know, you for Halloween you guys can just dress up and go out. You know? it, it would be fun. It would be fun. <laughs> so so uh, you're y'all are getting back to the live shows now too. We were talking mm-hmm. about that before we hopped on air. What do y'all have coming up right now? On April 24th, we have the SIP Theater in Paintsville, Kentucky, and May 15th, we have the App Center. And you guys can actually go buy tickets tomorrow at the box office. Nice, nice. Have y'all uh, performed at the app or anything? Yeah. No, I've not. I've never. No. 
No, it's 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 a really really nice place. I'm I've, excited. I, yeah, I've yeah. never been to the sip. So uh, whenever it comes back to uh, getting live music, are y'all like, are you just ready for it? Is there still a little bit of butterflies in the stomach? What are y'all's thoughts on going back to live oh, music? I'm 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 ready to get back uh, out yeah. there. I've not you know not, not, we were doing so many shows pre you know pre pandemic yeah and. Uh, and it was also just the brakes got slammed slammed on us, and uh, we did a gig the last weekend before basically the world stopped spinning, and mm-hmm. uh, and we didn't know exactly what was happening. We went out and played our gig, and we went home, and uh, we had no idea. We had book, we had shows booked, you know. You didn't know, you know. They just started canceling one by one. Yeah. You didn't know how long it was going to go. So it's so it's so great to be back out there. And fortunately, I get to double dip. I get to double dip with the Montgomery gang and then do, 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 do her uh, body work. Uh, Man, you must have some muscles on you. I mean, uh, like, like, like I drummers, it, it's, a, it. it's a workout. Drumming to me is so confusing. I don't know how you do the foot pedal thing when you hit it. I don't know. That's a, yeah. <laughs> like you're keeping tempo with your foot, but up here you're like doing something crazy. And I'm like, one more. Like, I can't I, do that. I like it a lot to dancing. You know, but I can't dance. It's like dancing <laughs> sitting down, you know. But. I like, like it. you're like the core of the song. If, like, that's all I listen to is the drums when I sing. I mean, you literally are the backbeat of the song when it yeah. comes, when it comes no to pressure. drumming. I mean, yeah. no, no pressure. I was just about to say, no pressure yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, no pressure or anything. But you're not the, the backbone the, of the song, man. So, so, so when it comes to doing live music, though, see, like, uh, I'm going to be getting back into it, too, but... You almost have that feeling of like it's your first time mm-hmm. because you haven't done it in so long. Is that what it feels like for you? Somewhat, somewhat. I mean, I've been rather fortunate. To, uh, I'm one of the Ridge, uh, one of the uh, worship leaders at Ridge Point Church. So, uh, as the pandemic was, was nearing kind of its midpoint, you know, we weren't doing in-person services for a while. But then we started doing virtual services. So I had the opportunity to to, to still go and you know help lead worship with that team. Okay. So. You know, I don't want to necessarily liken a worship service to a gig by any means, but you know, it kind of keeps you, kind of keeps the gears lubricated a little bit. So, uh, but definitely to get to actually, you know, get out and play these shows coming up, it, it's super exciting. It's been feels like it's been too long. Feels like it's been an eternity. Yeah, I mean, it has. What? So I guess it's been. Well, how do you know? Like how long it's been since y'all's last show? Well, actually, mine was pretty recent. I did a show recently in Nashville, but before that, it was like a year ago. Wow. Yeah. I was pretty nervous for that first show. I was like, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the it's thing. Yeah, yeah like I've got butterflies, too. Even though we've been doing it for years, it feels like the first time because it's been we, so long. We got together and played John Montgomery's Wedding uh, back in September. And we did like five songs. And it was just like I got up there and I was like really pumped because it was like, you know, we hadn't played since, together as a band since March. And, um, and then it was like after it was over with, it was kind of like, okay, now what? Yeah. And everything's still on pause, and just everything's still on hold. So it's a yeah. I think we're going to have a blast out there when we, we finally get it, get out there uh, down to Sip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be an exciting evening. Uh, and, and it's right around the corner too. And, and and you know, like it seems to be like we're finally getting that sense of normalcy that we've been talking about mm-hmm. for so long now. It's finally starting to like. I'm seeing music festivals popping up everywhere mm-hmm. now. Uh, me and my wife, we are really big in roller coasters, and all the parks mm-hmm. are opening back up next mm-hmm. month. And it's right. finally just, it feels so good to, for it all to feel normal. And especially live music. Heck, the last full concert that I went to was March of last year. Mm-hmm. That this, this is the longest that I've went without going to a concert in the last 10 years of my life or something. I don't know. It's been quite a while. It's a big change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, it, getting back to that sense of normalcy is going to be nice. What what, are y'all, uh, what have y'all missed most about performing live for somebody? Seeing the audience, you know, being excited and happy. It's kind of like my main goal as an artist, I would hope that, you know, that's yeah. for most people, is to, you know, make the audience feel something. Yeah. And that was always exciting to see. What about you, Brandon? Yeah, the camaraderie between, you know, the performers on stage and, you know, sort of breaking that fourth wall. And like she mentioned, making the audience feel something or you know, seeing that they're engaged in what you're doing and loving what you're doing. Uh, when they start giving you back as much as you were giving them, uh, that is an indescribable feeling. So mm-hmm. just that connection, the camaraderie with the band, the camaraderie with the audience, uh, definitely excited to experience that again. What, what what about you, Sean? Uh, there's just so many so many things because it's a, you know it's it's a thing where 
I, I feel like if you're a, you know, a musician has to make music, uh, you're a comedian, you have to tell jokes. Mm. You know, a painter has to paint. Um, you know, it, for you to be at peace with yourself. Yeah. And when you don't have that outlet, all of a sudden it's they they a hole and it's hard to fill. And I know I catch myself going through my gear, getting everything ready for a gig that's not coming up. Yeah. You know, I've got, you know, because I've got things packed up a certain way to load in the car and go, you know, and uh, Wait, okay, I've got them all set up right now. I could go play a gig right now. I could be ready in 15 <laughs> minutes. It's, yeah. it's good to be ready, though, because yeah. you, it's worth nowadays. You never know. Yeah, I'm you know, just, just getting out there and doing it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a labor of love. It really is. And I think it's something that the world needs right now, too. With uh, Well, art is needed. It's everybody's escape. There, I don't know many people that don't listen or watch some form of entertainment. Yeah. And without that, people go crazy. I mean, well, look at last year with how <laughs> crazy people went. They you, started you, canceling stuff, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one thing that I loved most about going to a concert, especially like a huge, big concert, is just seeing thousands of people all there for the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that you put race aside, you put religion aside, backgrounds, everything, and you're all there as one, all for the same person. Just how music and entertainment in general – brings people together, mm -hmm. that is one of the most beautiful, magical things that anybody can ever experience. You'll find a lot of common ground there, those people, because everybody is there for the same reason. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and one of the things I've, I've missed during all this pandemic is, is, you know, the weekends that we didn't have a gig, a lot of times I would go out and watch some of the other guys, you know, try to support some of the other local musicians and some of the venues and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I miss that. I missed I missed the hell of that because it was like, you know, because, you know, you know, I know as I know on the flip side of that, if I'm up there playing and we take a break and somebody from another band I know that I respect comes up and tells me, you know, hey, you guys sound tight tonight, you guys sound good. Yeah. You it's know, a good feeling. Yeah, you know, and I try to give it I always try to give it back to the other guys in the in the you know, the local local flavor, you know. Yeah. And um it's yeah, it's that stinks, man, when you you know, you can't go out and watch your buddies play. You can't go play. Yeah. But but it's finally hitting here, and, and such a good time too. With spring in the air, mm -hmm. it's beautiful outside. I mean, it's it, it feels good it's with everything. Well, it coming might be back. spring. It was snowing the other day, so <laughs> I mean, it may be spring. It's still <laughs> April. It, everybody <laughs> says like, oh, April, that's going to be a warm month. Whenever I first moved here in like two thousand, I think I, I came here in two thousand nine. But in two thousand like ten or twelve, y'all had some ridiculous snow in April. Mm -hmm. It was like. I mean, it was the time that people were without power and stuff. Yep. It was like several feet of snow. Yeah. And it was April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I just, it gets crazy sometimes. Yeah, we have four seasons in one week. The weather's week. been kind of crazy cool. like, lately. Like, you'll see some snow, and then the next day it's like 70 degrees out. Did you see that one snow that uh, the, the snowed the other day? Uh, it was real weird looking. Yeah. Uh, it looked like crack, to be honest. I mean, like <laughs> that, that, that's the only thing I can like really say what it looked like. It was like little white balls. But uh, uh, somebody told me it was hummus. Snow or something like that. Oh. I've never. Hummity snow. Hummity snow. Hummity that snow. was it. Yeah, that's, snow. that's an old timer. Never yeah. heard that term in my entire uh, life until I seen that crack snow the other day. No. I guess I'm hummus old. snow sounds good. <laughs> I mean, hummus is good. Yeah, I just, I, I wouldn't, I never thought, I just didn't know that there was other types of snow. I just thought snow was snow. I know there's like hail. Yeah. But like, that was it. Yeah. I, I didn't know there was other types of snow. I just called it either wet snow or like, you know, just, like, you know, it kind of ice yeah. that turns nice or that one snow. It's just like, it just melts in your hand and you're like, oh, like, you know, I don't know what that yeah. sounds called. I, but. But yeah, there's apparently several types of snow. Who, who would have thought? Hmm. So, so uh, with the uh, live shows that y'all are doing, are y'all working on any more this year? Are you trying to get like maybe a little tour lined up, or what's going on with that? Or are you like just want to see how these go first? I don't know. What's your mindset of going back on the road? There's possibly going to be a tour at the end of this year at some point Ooh. for me, or uh, you know, it's really just depending on how um, these shows go because we're definitely going to keep doing more shows, trying to get our names out there and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and, and it's so cool to see like everybody working together, especially the uh, <clears throat> show at the SIP there. Because mm -hmm. a lot, like like you were uh, mentioning earlier, a lot of the same bands are also playing in different. Uh, like, uh, well, how Scott is opening up the show. Mm -hmm. And was it going? Is it going to be Scott? Well, Scott Cable for everybody that don't know. Scott Cable, then uh, Montgomery, and then right. Halo. Right. That how it's going to go? Cool. 
That's, yeah. just, that's just like, but yeah. all, all those same people are going to be on yeah. stage at, with the other bands. That it's, was, it's cool. That's another guy that, that I'm fortunate to get to work with, and it's Scott. Because he's a, he, you know, he's a good dude. Know, he's, oh, he, Scott's he, a good guy. He yeah. is a good guy. And, uh, you know, and we just like, you know, was like ships in the night passing the, you know, in the scene, and we never had the opportunity to work together on some stuff. Yeah. Well, this has been nice. Yeah, Scott's a great guitarist. Like, he's. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he really is. And I'm glad to see him finally getting out there doing some solo and he stuff gets into as well. It. Like, yeah. I can see him during practice and he's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you get it. You get it. So, so with uh, how, how me and Sean were talking about uh, church earlier, mm-hmm. did uh, you think, well, you said you're a youth pastor? Uh, well, I'm one of the worship leaders. I play, worship leader. yeah, I play guitar uh, for do, the worship team at Worship One Church. Do you think that uh, church has helped with your uh, music church? background? Church is really what taught me how to play guitar because some of my er- some of my earliest memories of you know me not actually physically having a guitar was going to church and seeing people playing guitars yeah and uh, you know that was one of my earliest fascinations uh, was seeing you know these elder gentlemen they were all playing the three chord uh, hymns and all that and it was just so great and energetic at that point and that that was maybe my initial attraction to the instrument and it's always kind of built uh, since that yeah, uh, church has been a tremendous part of my musical journey because once I finally did get a little older and actually start trying to play the instrument seriously, uh, that was something that was really important to me was to get up there and partake of what yeah. they were doing, what I watched growing up. And so, yeah, playing, you know, the adage goes, you always get better by playing with people better than you. Mm, and I so, like that. yeah, so like when you're that. first starting out, not really going to take much, but you're still yeah. you're playing with people better than you. You're learning new musical things. You're learning some new styles, and you just kind of keep progressing off of that. So, yeah, continually kind of working my way up and playing. Uh, got to the point that I was playing just about any church that I go visit. Uh, you know, if I'm not scheduled on a set at Rich Point, if I get to go visit somewhere else, they're like, "Hey, you got your guitar in your mm-hmm. car?" Sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I've, I haven't been to y'all's church, but I'm just trying to recollect my very bad memory. Clayton, is that where he Clayton goes Case. church? Yes, Clayton sir. Case. Yes, Shout sir. out to him, man. I like Clayton. Caleb, all of them down there. They're good people, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, Caleb people. has actually moved on. Uh, yeah, I've seen where he uh, moved somewhere. I, yeah. I just scrolled through Facebook. Where did he go to? Moorhead, I believe. Good for I him. I might be misquoting that, but I believe it's Moorhead. Good for him. Do you have a favorite old time hymn or anything? Mm, man. That's a tough one to kind of choose from. Uh, I've always particularly enjoyed seeing the audience get into Amazing Grace. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, you know, it's just such a pretty piece of music, depending on how you play it. Mine's uh, either uh, I Fly Away or Old Gospel Ship. Yeah. Love those two. Yeah. It's fun to play. Absolutely. Fun to play. See, I come from a Pentecostal background. Yeah, well, so do I. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, we get into it. Yeah. yeah. We're, 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 yeah we're the yeah. We're, we're the fun same, church. Same, oh, were you, were you same, same, same here. Well, Pentecostal's probably the only churches that, uh, well, I don't know. That, but me and you being drummers. So, uh, yeah, we like to get well, yeah, Pentecostal. Get we get loud. We get, get loud. It, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and to kind of piggyback on what you guys were talking about there, playing in church, that's one of the best one of the best experiences for, you know, at least I found growing up was, you know, because a lot of times you would have like a guest singer come in, they'd drop in for a service, get up and sing with you, and sometimes, you know, you have to kind of learn to be flexible. Yeah. Like you never played with, never, you know. Just all of a sudden, the pastor says, "Come up and sing us a song." Yeah, <laughs> and you got to yell. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like you've never, you don't, you've never spoken to this person before, and all of a sudden, you're, you know, you're playing a song with them. So you have to learn how to pick up the pieces and go and make it presentable right there on the spot, on the fly. You know, so. it, it it really is fun, man. I, I don't get to go as much as I used to whenever I was younger, but a lot of my love for music came from church mm-hmm. and just the. I started out with drums and tambourines, so I got when it, I just listened to the drums of songs and the per, per, percussion instruments behind it. I fell in love with that from church. Whenever I heard of Frankenstein by Edgar Winter Group, I lost my mind. I was like, "Whoa! Like somebody they they can do this much?" Right. So so yeah, it was a. Uh, Church is uh, responsible for a lot of music background whenever it comes to Appalachia, I would believe. I was going to say, it's a real common narrative around here, it seems like. Almost anybody that's involved in the local music scene that seems to they have some background in church, whether it be playing in church or singing in church or whatever they've done. Uh, So, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah. It's a great place to, to hone your craft. 
so yeah. to speak. And, and whenever, uh, well, Kanye, for example, he found a lot of uh, his artists that he started out with, like in the early 2000s, from church. I think John Legend, uh, mm-hmm. he discovered him in church. Uh, yeah, a lot of it. And now he's doing the Kanye Christian thing. <laughs> Have y'all heard that? Have y'all heard any of it? I've heard yeah. some of it, yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. From from a guy that's not a rap fan, I'm kind of into it. Not going to lie. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, uh, Halo, one thing that I really loved about your music are the music videos. Like the one at Billy Ray's. That was, it was, it's so cool to see Billy Ray's put on the map like that. It was but, really fun. The people there were really nice. Yeah, and, and yeah. like this, uh, it's such a historic restaurant there in the Prestonburg yeah. community. To see, to see you give it that type of spotlight that you did, it was really cool. So with this new album that you're coming out with, uh, do you got any music videos that you're working on with it? I actually just recently did a music video for Shades of Blue at the Mountain Art Center. Mm. And, and we I, were talking before air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shades of Blue, folks, listen to that one. It's a good <laughs> song. It's a good song. Yeah, uh, I got my sister to do it again. You know, uh, she goes by Lumix. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen you know bits and pieces of it. I haven't completely got to see it yet because she won't let me. But oh, she. she oh, that. Me, no. <laughs> she wants it to be completely done. She wants it to look a certain way, and then she'll show me it. I can get that's, it, yeah. but at least you can trust her. Yeah, like I've I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it looks high quality. Looks good. Nice, <laughs> nice. That was a fun one to record because uh, it didn't require any movement. It it's simplistic in its own way. You know, you mm-hmm. you've heard it, and uh, it's just a simplistic song, and it doesn't need much. Well, in the words of Willie Nelson, <laughs> all you need is three chords and the truth. I think that that a lot of musicians can learn from those words right there because yeah, whenever you uh, a simple song is sometimes the way to go. I think a yeah. lot of artists can really overthink something. They overthink it and they do like too much when a yeah. song doesn't need a lot to make it good. As yeah. long as you get your word out, it really doesn't matter, you know. You don't need like all these background vocals and all these weird like funky little trumpets in the background. See, Shades of Blue, it's just what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. That's the song. Where, where does that? Uh, uh, you told me before, air is kind of like a dedication. Oh, yeah, dedication to your My, sister. Yeah, and I feel like um, you know I was honored to have her do the video for that song because that specific song. Does she know that that song's about her? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, she was going through a tough time in her life, so I was like, I'm gonna do this for her that's that's neat yeah your sister is fantastic yeah she was here at, this uh, time yeah yeah and the people that didn't get a chance to watch that one go check that and go check out her work too <laughs> she's been doing uh, quite a bit of stuff uh since then i've seen that uh she's kind of getting the groundwork on her production company going and all mm-hmm. that so a big shout out to lumix doing yeah, good things all that out. <laughs> so, so uh are y'all going to be is she kind of going to be your go-to videographer from now on with your music videos for the most part yeah nice so uh, you're going to be releasing one pretty soon, right? Is mm-hmm. it today or tomorrow? Uh, it's today. Today. Yeah. It's uh, Head Over Heels. Yes. Yes. Now, that music video was done by Carl DeBow, and he is amazing. Yeah. We well, talked about him last time. Yeah. Is that he... the one where you like uh, had to like, uh, get on the farms and stuff? Is that the yeah. one? Yeah. Is that the one with the falcon? Yeah. Nice. I've been, wait- I've been waiting to see this yeah. music video. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was somebody new that I just, you know, wanted to do, you know, I want him to do my videos for a while now. Because uh, I know that I've seen previous videos of his because he's done people like Rascal Flats, like we mentioned mm-hmm. beforehand. He's done music videos for, you know, those big country artists and stuff. Is that the guy working with Snoop Dogg now? No, that's Josh Akima. Okay. Now, he was the video walker for, for like, um, Fine By Me okay, and Nevermind yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um... They are honestly completely different, and I love both ways that they do them. He, Carl is very organized. He knows what he wants to do, when he wants to do it. And I love the way Josh does it because he sees something pretty, and he's like, let's go record it there. Cool. Yeah. Well, I can see both sides to both that. Both of them you know? are good. I mean, spontaneous or not, they, they're both great videos. They're great at what they do. He just and even my sister, you know, she's very, she's very organized. She makes sure it is. If it's not right, then we record it again. Yeah, she yeah. seemed like a kind of a perfectionist, but she, I'm the same way. She is. When we did the one down there at Billy Ray, she was like, "You need to do that again." And I was like, "Why?" And she's like, "Cause this chair was in the way." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, okay." They see the details, we don't. Yeah, I mean, uh, she sat there for like 15 minutes fixing the cake things on the counters. <laughs> 
Well, I'm excited. I, I don't know about all that now. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist to an extent, too. No, I'm just playing. Do, you, do y'all have any uh, hobbies outside of music? Do you do anything okay. else, y'all? I play video games. I never thought you was, as I you play, as a... I play Fortnite. Mix, I, Fortnite. <laughs> I play Fortnite. Yeah, I never would have guessed that either. For yeah. Real? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, um, my friends and uh, stuff, they play it all the time, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. And I'm getting old. I tried to play it. Like, I got a new Xbox last year, and it was one of the free games that came with it. Yeah. And I tried, but I was getting murked on there. Uh, I think that's what cool kids say. Murked. Honestly, the fir- like the last interview we did, you probably never catch me saying I was a video game person ever. But um, my friend Brianna, she was like, Play games with me. And I was like, I don't know. I don't. Are you going to start like a Twitch oh, no. channel or anything? Oh, man. Uh, you never, people make money. You know, you know Twitch is really money. not that bad. Like I've seen like live streams and stuff on there. And then uh, like, have you seen those videos that like Mr. Beast does? And he's like, yeah. here's a hundred thousand dollars. And they're like, huh? Yeah, it's, 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 he's crazy. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's nothing. I got a, uh, well, somebody that I know, his son is now a professional video gamer for a college. Like college yeah, does there's, uh, leagues. Yeah, like uh, one, yeah. Uh, e, uh, esports. esports. Yep. Esports. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, him and his team won this big competition, and he alone won. I think it was like a hundred grand or Ooh. something like that. Just him for playing video games. The That's same crazy. thing that my parents. Got on to me all my life. Right. Get outside, get outside, and I and I listened. This is what I get for listening to my parents. Could have been a hundred thousand dollars richer. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> what about what about you, Sean? Do you got anything that uh, you do outside? Uh, a little bit of a comic book geek, a little bit of a computer geek. Oh, comic, like uh, why, why comic books? Uh, I would have never looked at you just, as a comic book yeah, guy. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, it yeah. makes that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, I'm just uh, uh, I'm kind of a Kind of, I'm kind of a mix of things. You know? Do you, see, I used to love the old Punisher comics. Yeah, that yeah. were always my favorite. Yeah, I liked I liked I liked all those old, uh, you know, the old Silver and Golden Age comics, and, and you know, um, you know, Spider Man was my jam growing yeah. up. You know, I love, love, love Spider Man. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, you go to my you go to my house. I've got. Spider Man junk everywhere. It's okay, from, from 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 all the new Spider Man movies, <laughs> mm. who's the best Spider Man? Uh, I like the guy that's been doing it here lately. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, is yeah, that his name, Tom Holland? Tom Holland, yeah. yeah he's, he, uh, he's he's seemed to do a good job. He they, does do a good. He got job. a little weird yeah. there for a while, yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, who's the first Spider Man? Toby. To- Toby McGuire. Yeah, Toby McGuire. Yep. Ah, man, that was... That, that I, was like I, I guess that's just what Tough I grew Jesus. up on, you know, like, and everybody has, I guess, their favorite. But I like Toby. I like, I like Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2, okay, Spider-Man 3, and yeah, not so much. Have you, yeah. <laughs> have you guys, like, seen the Stan Lee where he was on live and he was talking about how Spider-Man came to be? And his, like, producer oh. dude was like, it's not good enough. Yeah. You need to go. And he's mm-hmm. like, you know, there was one last issue of, you know, this magazine going out that we had because none of it was doing good. He goes, so you know what? I slapped Spider-Man on there just to get it out of my system. And then it became the number one thing. Yeah, I've I seen something like that. And who would have thought Spider-Man? Spider-Man would have never happened if he would have listened to that one guy. Mm-hmm. Stan Lee was the man. He was stuck on Spider-Man, though. He like could not get it out of his system. It's and he's no just like, yeah. crossroads moments. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. things, things, you know, if, if he'd gone left instead of going right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this would have been, you would have never had Marvel. I mean, everything that Marvel produced, you would have never had any of that. Avengers, everything. Dang, that's crazy to think about. Do, do y'all have like a favorite superhero or anything? Oh, God, you guys are going to think I'm lame, but I like Batman. We love good old Batman. I'll dive into that here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brandon? I'm going to hit you with a niche audience, but Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, technically speaking, he is. I guess because he has superpowers. He Ta- does. I mean, Ooh, that's a good conversation. Is Goku a <laughs> superhero? Superhero. I don't know. He's a little. He's, he's a, little a, he's a, he's a hero, yeah. and he has superpowers. Yeah, I mean, and in his story, I mean, in his story, he has saved the world countless times yeah. from certain destruction. Even going back in time three minutes, if you know, you know. 
<laughs> to save the world in the most recent series. So, I mean... Do you remember the uncensored that they done? A late night on Adult Swim, whenever that first came out? Yep. Yeah, we won't talk about that. So, you know, we're on this topic. Ah. If my sister was here, she'd be like, Vegeta. That's her favorite one. Oh, no, those fountain words. That is Actually, no, I love Vegeta, too. <laughs> yeah, she loves him. Like, if she was sitting here right now, she'd blab on about DBZ all day. All day. I mean... I, I grew up whatever I get was, uh, I grew up younger. I haven't watched it a lot in the recent years. Mm -hmm. uh, people, if you're 18 years and older, don't look up the uncensored thing that me and him are talking about. <laughs> that, right. that got we weird. Yeah. That got real weird. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Sean? Um, I, I, I was always, you know, like I said, I was a big Spider-Man fan growing up as a, as a kid. <laughs> so Spider-Man's your go-to? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, do, do you have like a favorite uh like a version of them because there's been uh, quite a few. I got, I keep going back to the original Peter Parker. Yeah, you know, they've they've changed so many identities in the, in the years recently, but it's like it's like I can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, it's, it, there's there's nothing like the original. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is true. Yeah, I, I like the uh, the multiverse thing that they done. Oh, did that, you see it? Is is that one on Netflix? And it's yeah. like it's like a cartoonish yeah, style. Yeah. yeah. But I hated the song that they done for it. That post Malone Sway Lee sun, the Sunflower oh, thing. Sunflower. It's a good song, but it has nothing to, to do, do with, with Spider Man. The, yeah. I'm, like I, I listen to the lyrics. I'm like, what is this even about? This it, they ain't saying anything about Spider. -Man. See, yeah. uh, but back whenever they released the first Spider Man, and I'm about to say something's controversial. <laughs> But I'm a, I'm a Nickelback fan, and, and, and it all oh, and it all started with the first Spider-Man, uh, Chad Kroger, and I think it was Santana or somebody. They done a song called Hero, and oh, it fit in with the music so good. And I was a little kid just listening to that song constantly, and being a big fan of the movie whenever it first came out. But yeah, that made me fall in love with Nickelback. Chad you know Kroger, what? interesting he's a, story. He's underrated. Um, when every t every time I'm like. You know, you know, I jump to new bands and uh, I'm like, let's do photograph. Okay, right. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Nickelback. All right. <laughs> but it's not Nickelback. It's Steph Leifert, the one I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah. I was actually going to say, because that's the only two that I know. When I was in a band about two or three years ago, I was like, yeah, let's do photograph. And the drummer was like, Nickelback. And I was like, no. <laughs> I love Nickelback, but I don't think I could pull off photograph. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it is a good song. Rock star. How You Remind Me. I mean, I can go on and on. Dark Horse, Same. that was a great album. Far Away, I love this song. Far Away's a good one, too. Nickelback is a good band. I'm tired people of people. But people down them because yeah. they sound the same in each one. Because he has, like, he's he sings it the same. But, like, yeah, but that's why different. we like them. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they tried to do, like, a little heavy metal thing with their latest <laughs> album, and it was it was bad. They need to just stick yeah, to, to the good bad. old uh, Nickelback. Yeah, yeah, yeah just stick to the Nickelback sound there, Chad. <laughs> On right. the flip side, they may be the world's greatest Metallica cover band. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how, how are they Metallica cover band? <laughs> because of that, uh, where they did the, uh, they did Sad But True often in concert. Really? Yeah, oddly enough, that's, that's, I've, it, the, you just have to look it up. I can't wait. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, I mean, well it, it's cool whenever you see like these, uh, See, I would have never thought of you doing Photograph by Def Leppard. That kind of blows my mind. And oh, it's yeah. cool whenever you go to a concert and they play a song that you just did not expect whatsoever. I think uh, a while back, I did Long Black Train here, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah you I, did. I did Long Black Train. Yeah, it sounds weird, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> not really. I can see it. I can see it. I mean, I had to bring it up song. a few steps because song. Josh Turner's like, there's a long, but I had, to, I had to bring it up a little bit, but I, I know, it sounded pretty good. I, I mean. seen that guy live in concert, and uh, I brought a date with me at the time. <laughs> to any guys out there listening, uh, if you're uh, dating a young gal, or wh wh whichever your preference is, it's 2021, do what you want, but uh, don't bring them to a Josh Turner concert because they are not going to pay attention to you. No, <laughs> they, they are going to forget that you exist for that two and a half hours. But I, I was watching uh, one YouTube video, and I was watching Bob Dylan, and apparently, uh, you know how people scream Freebird? out at concerts oh, go ahead. they've been doing that to bob dylan for yeah. years and i watched an interview one time him talking about how just pissed off he gets every time somebody shouts "Freebird." well one time uh, somebody shouted "Freebird," and bob dylan was prepared and oh. bob dylan belted out "Freebird." <laughs> wow. i mean yeah it is awesome whenever i went and seen uh i seen motley Crue, they done some uh pink floyd uh covers and theirs uh, they, they kind of like incorporated into certain songs well the, well, the coolest 
unexpected versions of a song that I ever heard was uh, back. Uh, I saw Robert Plant and Jimmy Page on the No Quarter tour. Oh, I'm so jealous. And uh, they had Port- Pearl Thompson from the uh, Cure playing guitar with them, and they actually did a cover of Lullaby. Oh, dude, that just blew my mind. I don't know if you're a Cure fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, man. I was just. Where'd you get to see them at? We're up arena. This was back in the nineties, and it was on the No Quarter tour. I was born and too I late, still, man. I still remember that to this day. I was just blown away that they were doing a doing a, a cover of The Cure. God, that, that, that's always been two of my, well, one of my go-tos to see Zeppelin live, and that's mm-hmm. probably not going to happen. So with them <laughs> yeah. two guys, that's going to be your only chance. It was a good show. Did they only do that one album together? Or was there two uh, of them? Uh, uh, Robert sure. Plant's uh, solo stuff was good, though. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, that, uh, what was that one song? I'd have to look at it here. Uh, I like Big Big Log. Is Big Log, that's what, was, that's what I was thinking That's what a lot of people liked. Yeah, uh, man. One of my favorite song. songs from that era was uh, 29 Palms that he did. It was yeah. Another really that's underrated. awesome song. You know. um, that now is in album. Just, you know, back in, the, back in the 90s, you just pop that in your stereo, turn it, turn it all the way up. It, it, it's, it. it's crazy how like well they fit the 90s sound back then, too, because they, they, they incorporated a little bit of new sound into that uh, one record that you were talking about. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Led Zeppelin fit for the 90s. It was cool. It's a, hey, these, these guys are timeless, a lot of them. I, you know, I, wish, they, I wish, uh, wish a lot of these guys could stick around and, and, and be productive for longer than they are. I guess that's the... I guess, I guess that's the the duality of being an artist, you only have so many years to work in a body of work. Yeah. So. And, and if you don't do it right, you're not going to have that timeless sound and feel that a lot of people do. That's why yeah. I think a lot of uh, new artists nowadays, like they, they fall into those traps of trying to make these hit songs. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these hit songs are just forgettable because ah, they, well, there's not, not a lot of substance. They're not focusing on the main part of what a song is supposed to be. You get what I'm saying? Like, they're just like, okay, if this sounds good, then it's okay. Like, if it sounds good, it's all right. Yeah, but if it has a good beat. I don't like that. It has to make sense. It has to be cohesive. It, it has to be something that'll make some, somebody feel mm. something, you know? Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many people that I talk to nowadays, and they'll, like, show me one of their favorite songs, and I'm not a fan. And I'm like, why do you like that? Like, oh, it has a good beat. Yeah. And, and that, that that's their reasoning, is it has a good beat. No, I admit that there's some songs out there that just have, you know, a good sound to them, but their lyrics make absolutely no sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like Come Together. I love, love the song so much, but he talks about, like, all this You're talking stuff. about the Beatles? Yeah. They but were, I they were to... also, uh, they, they took a trip to India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I listened to the... Uh, Yellow Submarine. Do you remember yeah. uh, when Aerosmith did a cover of that song? Come together. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I like that one, too. But again, them lyrics are a little crazy. They <laughs> sound a little wild. I was like, uh, I like when, um, you know, other big people do other big people stuff. I feel like it's very iconic. Like Miley Cyrus, she sung... Um, oh, uh, 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 Zombie. Yeah, she got up there and did that. Man, she killed, she killed it, it too. I mean, who would have thought? And Miley, she had like she had a lot of rock stuff on her new album too. She had Joan Jett on yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, Stevie Nicks. I think was on there. I think mm-hmm. I have to look at it. But Miley's new album. Yeah, good stuff. I think doing cover songs, it's really fun. The only sad, the, the only scary part about doing a cover song is that people know it by heart. People know it. And if you do it wrong, they will know. If that you, you botch did it wrong, anything, they will call you out. They on know. It. See, doing an original <laughs> song, you know, it's fine. You can you can diddle that all there, fix things. But if you do a cover song like Journey, you pull up in Journey, people are gonna know it, and they're gonna be like, "You just did that wrong. You just said that wrong. That's not the right lyric." Or like if you don't like, <laughs> m- like maybe if you don't like start on the lyrics just in time and they've already started. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of weird. I, I watched uh, s- something like that earlier. Uh, Chris Stapleton done. Uh, cover of uh, Waylon Jennings I forget the Waylon Jennings song he covered but yeah that was kind of the problem that he was having do you like do you do a lot of covers or do you stick with mostly original stuff so for the show coming up we we mostly do originals but we do have a few cover songs that we're gonna put in there spice it up a little bit nice get the party going they're gonna be pleasant surprises that's for sure everybody likes hearing something that they that that, that they know that they know know? yeah because you know doing originals that's great people you know i'm sure people love listening to 
new things, listening to the new sound of it all. But, you know, sometimes people just want to listen to something that they know, you know? Yeah. To be like, it, okay, I know the song. you got to reward the audience for indulging you in your art. Yeah. Mm, that's a good way you of give, looking you at it. Back, yeah. you know, worded. They're indulging Very you <laughs> in, 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 in taking in what you're doing, your original material. Mm-hmm. See? So it does behoove you to kind of give back to the audience and say, here's something, here's something that you know. Yeah. Thank you for sitting through our other, our other things that you don't know. And, uh, yeah. Man, that was articulate how you worded that. That could have been the title yeah. of the there book, man. That was good. <laughs> that, are, was, are, that was a good, good are, time. Are, are there, is there like a cover song that like y'all don't do? Like, Is there one that you're just nervous to touch? Or is Not anything... So you would go for like, like Africa? By example, oh. or uh, if Paul I, Simons, I, you know, you I call wished, me Al? I wished I could sing Africa. You know, I wish I could pull <laughs> something like that off. There, there's just like some songs that I think like people are just kind of scared. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say scared. They but just turn kind of, away from it because it's 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 almost too good. You're like 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 Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay, that, that song's just hard in general to do. You, you yeah, need multiple. Well, well people. there was one new band that uh, done it for that uh, Suicide Squad movie. What do you think about that? Uh, with you being the big superhero fan you are, did you like Suicide I like, Squad? I like, I like all the Suicide like Squad it. stuff they've been doing. I think it's I think it's decent. You know, it's a is it great? Uh, in my opinion, no. But you know, but all the you know all the DC Universe stuff I've been watching is you know it's it's. Mm-hmm. I like it. I'll rewatch it. You know. Yeah, they. Uh, Honestly, the best part about Suicide Squad is the songs. Mm-hmm. Have y'all listened to like the little soundtrack that they have, like Twenty One Pilots and stuff? <clears throat> it was. I it like was, the songs. It, it, it was good. Panic it, at the it, Disco. It Panic at the Disco. Yeah, that's what I was about to it. say. I got off track because yeah. I was listening to you, but yeah, it was Panic at the Disco. I know who it was up here. <laughs> Panic at the Disco, man. They really. They're crazy. Have you seen? Have you listened to Into well, the Unknown? I, well, I grew up like on the original, like Panic at the Disco, like the. Uh, oh yep, my right sins not tragedies. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And then I listened to, like, "Hey, look, Ma, we made it" or whatever. I'm like, this hey, is the look, same Ma, band. What? Yeah, he or completely changed other, his style. What was that other Say song? Say Amen. There's no, that, LA uh, Devo T. There's. God, that here. that big one from last year was uh, it? High hopes. Freaking high hopes. <laughs> that in that old town road, that was all I heard oh, for yeah. months straight. And just after a while, goodness See, now, gracious. Uh Brendan Urie, he's got a range on him. He did a song for Disney and it was like a girl song, like a girl was singing it and he did it in the same key almost. And I was yeah. like, Man, you're wild for that. He did it into the unknown and I was like, Man, you're crazy for that. <laughs> Somebody might have to kick me somewhere to get me to hit them high hopes. <laughs> I, 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 pun intended. Da-da. <laughs> but do you have a favorite, like, do you have, like, a go-to favorite song that you like to play on guitar? All of my friends that play guitar has that one song that they just love to riff out. <sighs> That's a tough one because, I mean, there's different things that I warm up to whenever I sit down to try to play, and you know, whether I'm working on scales or just trying to write something of my own, whatever's going on. But I think probably one of the go-to riffs for me is Wicked Sensation by George Lynch from the Lynch Mob record. Uh, to me, that's just such a pounding riff, nice. just an awesome groove, killer tone. Lynch uh, Mob, man, more, more people need to talk about Lynch Mob. More people do need to talk about Lynch Mob. More people need to talk about George Lynch in general. Do you ever get to, like, mix in certain songs during service and try to see if people notice them or not? <laughs> not from a riff standpoint, but sometimes I'll, I'll try to incorporate a little bit of a line from something. Like, I've watched this one video on Facebook. Somebody done the Jeopardy theme song <laughs> and like like on a piano at church and they like done it like like really beautifully you know you you couldn't have <laughs> you couldn't tell if they didn't tell you what was going on in the video yeah but i thought that was pretty funny and yeah. it would be if i was in your position i would try my best yeah to do i can't like say I, I try to throw out any particular theme but usually if there's like a, an earworm from a solo in particular that i really like when it comes my turn to do a lead if it's not something that i've already kind of got pre-planned out I'll kind of mimic that on the fly, and generally nobody there gets it because no, not enough people talk about lynch mob, unfortunately. Well, well, it's cool to see like churches rocking out nowadays, though, yeah. because um, whenever I was uh, really involved in church, I'd be listening to bands like uh, Skillet, P.O.D. Uh, is August Burns Red a Christian group? I can't remember. 
Mm, they kind of. Maybe. Yeah. But uh, that's what me and all the other kids at church would listen to. Uh, and it would always bum me out that we couldn't rock out there in church. But I was like old school, real Southern Pentecost, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But uh, with, with churches nowadays, it seems like it's uh, that they're, they're rocking out. It's like almost a show more than a service. And it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh you know, we could go down the rabbit hole of what the intention is of, of being there and all that. But, yeah, I think uh, nowadays there is more focus on things like the production and overall mix and, you know, getting to be a little bit louder, the dynamics of the music that you're playing to suit the mood in the room. Uh, it, it, it's good to see that sort of creativity be able to open up. And because I mean, if you if you're there to worship, that's your that's your intent. You're there to worship. So to be able to do so freely for me. Uh, in particular, to be able to express myself for the reason as why I'm there, as well as everybody else having that sort of freedom, that's that's tremendous. That comes across uh, to the people that are there. That comes across to the congregation. And again, we were talking earlier about giving something back to the audience, them giving it back to you. Uh, so you know, some of that dynamic comes into play too. Uh, hmm. Just more things to to draw in the people. You know, cool. Uh, that's that's a good way of looking at it, man. Because, yeah, I'd say none of this would have been possible 100 years ago. Oh, but I think not. that people worship in different ways. And uh, to get your audience and your uh, church participants any way you can, yeah. it's, it's productive. Yeah, to not, be, to not be so fixated on tradition <clears throat> that you leave out the people that enjoy certain aspects. Yeah, because it's, it's always changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's always changing. Yeah, you got to put some type of modernness, you know. Yeah. Don't always stick to traditional. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, it's always you, good to mix it up. Yeah, you have to evolve to survive, especially mm -hmm. in the entertainment business, mm -hmm. too. I mean, uh, Still Panther is really the only band I like, new band that I know that can get away with like the whole '80s look and sound <laughs> and all that. If you're 18 years and younger, do not look up Still Panther. <laughs> always wanted to see those guys live, but uh, <laughs> 18 years and older. So with the with the new album, it's going to be self titled. How many songs are you uh, going to be trying to put on it? I'm not sure yet, but um, I would like to get around 10, 11, 12 ish songs. You know, something in the mix of that. I feel like that's a good, you know, start. Definitely for your first album. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. So what are you going to do with the ones that you didn't include on the album? What happens to songs like that? Well, they're singles, you know? So Okay. They, but, it, like, but do you have songs that, like, have, that you haven't released or anything? Oh, I definitely have songs that haven't been released, my guy. Oh. Yeah. So, well, like, what do you do with those? Like, do you, like... Oh, I hide them in my back pocket. <laughs> They're the future deep cuts. Yep. Well, yeah. I, what what do they call it? The deluxe version yeah. or whatever? Maybe include one or two? Maybe, possibly. Yeah, because that would be like the hardest part if I was an actual musician with actual talent like y'all, is what songs to include. That would be the hardest. Because like, you hear some bands that say, like, oh, they made over 200 songs for this record. And then they put it down in like 15. You're like, what happened yeah. to the other it's, 185? It's mind-wracking, yeah. mind especially, especially yeah. when you're going through the body of songs that you're wanting to put on a CD. Um, you know, just the arrangement. What order you it put them in? Yeah. That will yeah. that will that will cause you to lose sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you don't want you don't want it. You don't want the the two consecutive songs to sound alike. Yep. Even yeah. though they're your songs, they're going yeah. to sound kind of like. So you're trying to stagger stuff in there, and you're like, well, we'll take this one out. Well, <laughs> but I really like that song, so we'll put it yeah. at the end. Yeah, yeah it, gets, it gets bad. See, I'd say so. I feel as you know, as important it is for me to like the songs, you know, that are going on the album. I feel like it's also important for the people because that's the people who get, to, you know, listen to it. Mm -hmm. So while also trying to make it cohesive, I'm trying to also make it for the audience and myself to, you know, make the album appreciative. If that makes sense. I get it, and you you also have to make it relatable and yeah. stuff like that. Because I'm not saying that. Um, you know, it's not important to stay modern because it is, but it's always fun to go outside the box, you know, and do it, you know, you want to do, you know, because yeah. that's what I've been kind of doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't really classify my stuff as pop, but I wouldn't do it as country either. I'd probably just smush it together, like pop country. Yeah, even that's then, like, it, yeah. e even then, I wouldn't look at you as pop country. I don't yeah. know. See, like, whenever if I had put to put people... myself in a category, it'd be pop country. If, like, 
I've had to think about it, but I mean. But but it's 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 hard to put bands in certain categories, yeah. like especially like Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding Company. Whenever I listen to y'all, I it's country. It sounds country, but also sounds rock and roll. I mean, it's all over it's, the place. It's, it, we we call ourselves a country rock hybrid. That's why that's that's why we refer to ourselves as. But you know, we're I think John John Montgomery says that we're we're more Americana. And uh, yes, yeah, so especially uh, with the uh, new uh, song that y'all just released mm-hmm. too. That has a real Americana kind of uh, love. Love loved Hand of the Devil. That was yeah. That Hand was of the Devil. A, yeah. That was such a fun song to play and i love and, how it's so long too like um, I, I love long songs yeah you know, we got we got we got some, we got some uh contributing artists that work with us on that and stuff and it was just it, it that was a blast that's that's one of my that's one of my favorite songs that we do live you know it's yeah i mean it, it really is killer and I, I can see how uh john gets the americana feel from that too yeah. but like but like listen to the songs that you sent me the other day it's just all over the place but it is yeah, but, but it's I, hard to pinpoint an exact thing to call it because but I, know, but i think it's good though because i write how i feel you know if that <laughs> makes sense i write how i feel and then whatever comes out while i'm writing <clears throat> that's just what it is well i think that right there is important because i have the same mindset whenever it comes to my jokes i just say whatever i think is funny yeah. and i know somebody out there will eventually get it yeah. you know not everybody's going to like it not just like er- not everybody yeah, likes you know i see kevin hart music. on netflix all the time and uh you know he'll say a joke and i'm like what yeah <laughs> i'm i'm kind of the same way with him i'm not like a some of his stuff but yeah like it's not like my, he'll, my he'll go-to say some scale. jokes here and there and i'm like okay i understand those and then there's one that'll pop out and i'm like huh yeah i don't understand like there's always going to be somebody out there that just doesn't understand and that's okay you know yeah. they just can't relate to it yeah, there's, but there's going also going to be somebody out there, that does. Be somebody out there that does. But you also like the artist; they need to stay true to themselves because yep. I would have that mindset where I just tried to be relatable. I tried yeah. to be clean. I tried to do everything to make yeah. everybody else happy, and I wasn't happy with my own material. Yeah, like earlier we were talking about, you know, finding ourselves. That's a big part of discovering yourself. So if you find out who you are, it's really easy to just write what you want to do. Yeah, go, I mean, go with it. Like, even yeah. if it's weird, go yeah. with it. I like Stan Lee. Bjork, she, was, <laughs> she made it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, going back <laughs> on the topic of Stan Lee, you know, he did what he wanted to do, and he, <laughs> Spider-Man now, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Exactly. And, yeah. But, it, but it all starts with you taking that step forward mm-hmm. and that that and you never know when that moment in your life is going to be you won't recognize them yeah. until it might have passed like you were talking about earlier sean that one crossroads moment where yeah. you can go left or right and you just mm-hmm. gotta look out for those moments mm-hmm. i guess mm-hmm. yep. to be an artist you must know who you are yeah especially yeah. like a a, a, a true artist yeah and, and once you yeah. find that what you uh want to do or comfortable doing or good at such a good feeling because then you can just finally relax a absolutely bit. Yeah. you can try so hard to be so relatable try so hard to mean everything to everybody that you wind up meaning nothing to anybody and i think whenever somebody pursues who and what they are you're a melting pot of your influences and so when you allow that true art to come out of you whatever it may be like you said, there's going to be somebody somewhere that's going to pick up on that. That's going to relate to that person. Uh, they're going to enjoy what you're doing. They're going to be. They're going to gravitate towards what you're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to have some that do, and you're going to have some that don't, and that's okay. That's yeah. how it works. It's, yeah. I don't like Florida Georgia Line. You know, plenty of people life, do that. There's going to be people yeah. that like you, and there's going to be people that don't like you, and and. Um, you just got to... That's life. Yeah, yeah, you just got to accept it. It's just what it is. You just got to have fun with what you do. Yep. And I don't even pay attention to, you know, when people say stuff, you know, negative towards me. I'm just like, all right. Yeah. You know? I'm just, just go with it. I just get so jealous of y'all musicians because if, like, somebody doesn't like what you're doing, they're not just going to stop start booing you or something like that. They'll oh, just, yeah, like... Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll just kind of, like... They just kind of get up and leave. They don't yeah, like you. exactly. You'd be surprised. Especially with a little liquid courage for them. Yeah. yeah. They, but see, with mine, man, mm-hmm. like, I just, it takes that one silent moment for them to say whatever they want to say to you and then you gotta you 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 have to say something (laughs) in my line of work you can't just let them keep going i just get really jealous of you musicians and hecklers 
Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> on the flip side, it's that liquid courage that turns people more so yeah. onto what you're doing. This is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have had, to, I've had, I've had guys come up to me uh, that can barely walk, hanging on me. I love you, man. I love what you do. <laughs> <laughs> but but, it, but it, 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 it's a beautiful experience, though. And at the end of the night, whenever you see people smiling and they're going home and you know that they've had a good night and that you're responsible for mm-hmm. that, yeah. it's, it's a feeling that you can't explain to anybody. Yeah. Now, I got to say, I've had, I've had an interaction with the crowd once and they silent. Oh. Silent. Nothing. Nothing from no one, and I was like, "Man, this is kind of tough." Is it's that kind of, kind of like, rough. Did, did, were you on the show that they done with the Elvis people? Yes, yes. Was yes. that the one you're talking yeah. about? Well, that was that 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 right there. Was, John was telling me about that whenever he was up here, and, and you know, and and and, and 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 you know, to blow her horn a little bit, um, she actually got compliments. So, so, so <laughs> she got compliments. Us not so much. Uh, they we were not what they were expecting that night. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, Haley, uh, yeah, I actually had a few people come up and say, "That little girl's good." I was like, "Yeah, she's all." Yeah, I put out some old time rock and roll out of the back of my pocket because it wasn't looking good for those originals, man. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't yeah. looking good, so I was just like, "You know what? We'll just pull her right out." And here's old time rock and roll, people. But but it's so exciting to be like up here with y'all and like not uh, getting to sit a little bit close actually and up here prom- promoting shows actual live shows not one show multiple shows it's exciting Mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's been fun today thank Mm -hmm. y'all i've really really enjoyed this and for the people that want to get the tickets to the shows that we're talking about pick up the new self-titled album halo which will be dropping tomorrow what time is it dropping tomorrow midnight tonight or specific time Uh, i think it's in the yeah yeah pretty sure it's midnight tonight okay yeah cool I was thinking, I was going to say in the morning, but then I was like, oh, <laughs> it's midnight is the morning. That's what I meant. Yeah. I got you. But with uh, everybody wanting to uh, check out all of y'all's stuff, where do they go to do that? Uh, you can find me on all social medias at Legit Halo Music. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can find uh, Montgomery and the Phoenix Holding Company on Facebook. We're on Spotify. Uh, we have an Instagram. We have a Twitter. Um, you got to do it all nowadays. Yeah, we just, we just kind of we just kind of hit around with everything. Do you do any uh, solo stuff on social media or anything there? I've got a social media and a YouTube. It's just Brandon Hall. Um, I put out some of my own music on there. I don't really promote it too hard, but I've got some of my own stuff on there. Small vlog series, just little, a few little things. And for people that might want to check out a uh, Rich Point, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rich Point Church has a Facebook page. There's also uh, richpoint.net forward slash home church if you want to check them out. Great place. Yeah, from every, everything I've heard, I haven't got a chance to uh, stop by there yet. I've drove by quite a bit on my way to Jenny Wiley. Yeah. But I know with uh, people like you and Clayton, it has to be a great well, church. I'd like to formally invite you sometime. It'll be a pleasure to have you with us. Yeah, man. it would be a <laughs> pleasure to come down and check y'all out. But again, y'all, thanks. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you next week, folks. Boom.